And just like that, there is tons of Wheel of Time news to talk about. This past week, the San Diego Comic Con took place, and Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins was present, along with some others, and gave us a ton of new information, teasers, pictures, and clips to break down. This was one of the largest Wheel of Time TV show-related news dumps that we have gotten yet. Now, today we are going to break down the news from Comic-Con, discuss what it means for the show, season two and beyond, and get into Rafe's Q&A, which he gave us a significant, and I mean significant, amount of information about season two of the show. So all of that and more on this week's weekly Wheel of Time news. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers through book four of the Wheel of Time. If you have not read up to book four, there are going to be some major spoilers for the plot of The Shadow Rising. Watch at your own risk. All right, so let's kick things off by talking about Comic-Con. Now, if you're not aware, Comic-Con is one of the largest conventions in the world when it comes to nerd culture. And although Comic-Con happens in various cities around the world, the largest of these events is the San Diego Comic-Con, which attracts nearly 100,000 people every single year. That is, other than the last few years. Due to COVID-19, Comic-Con has not been an in-person event up until this year. Now, frequently, studios and networks release trailers, updates on projects, and they generally use Comic-Con to generate hype around their shows and projects. Amazon was set to release the Rings of Power trailer and have a panel discussing the new Lord of the Rings project that they've invested more than half a billion dollars into. Now, what seemed like an afterthought was the Wheel of Time panel that had producer Mike Weber showrunner Rafe Judkins, actor Daniel Henney, and writer Rami Park involved to discuss the Watt Origins featurettes. Now, to be honest, I was not expecting much from the panel, as I thought they'd be talking about the Season 1 features from Watt Origins and maybe tease that they'd be doing them again for Season 2. We got quite a bit more than we had anticipated, and that is to put it mildly. So first, we got a sneak peek of the Watt Origins Malkir feature at the panel. Now, let me go ahead and play that, and then we'll talk about it. The rose petal floats on water. The kingfisher flashes above the pond. Life and beauty swirl in the midst of death. So I love that this is basically going to be the history of Malkir. Now, the clip is narrated by Daniel Henney, who plays Lan, which explains his presence on the panel. Now, Lan, who is the last surviving member of the royal family of Malkir, which fell to the blight some 50 years prior to the start of the story, is seen here as a baby. Now, I'm very excited to see more of the Watt Origins videos. They were a highlight from season one, and I thought they were buried to the point that many people didn't even get to see them. They later released them separately, which was a great idea, but too little too late. They were incredibly well done. They told the background story that's necessary for a story the size of the Wheel of Time, and I'm very excited to see them make more of them. Now, we got information that these would be released to the public in August, so that's next month. That is absolute music to my ears. These should have been released prior to season one as primers for people to get into the story, and knowing that they would be releasing a number of the episodes before the season is just a great move from a marketing standpoint. Having these clips out gives non-book readers a chance to learn some of the lore that they won't find out during the show, and it lets people stay invested in the show even when it isn't airing. Not to mention, they are really well done. So this is very, very exciting news to me. The other thing to take from this is that it could imply something about the release date for the show. Now, this seems to be the beginning of some marketing for the show, and releasing the Watt Origins episodes starting in August would seem to me to mean that the show wouldn't be too incredibly far off. I can't imagine them releasing the show next summer, for instance, when they're just starting to release this stuff now. I'm thinking we may be closer to a winter release sometime after the Rings of Power completes, but we'll have to wait and see. So the next major thing that dropped was a one minute long behind the scenes video that covers the making of season two. Now, 
I'm not gonna be able to break that down in this video. I'll be doing that in a dedicated video that should come out not long after this video does, but I do wanna talk about some highlights. Now we had looks in the clip at many of the characters from season two that we were expecting to see, Shinarans, Aeol, White Cloaks, Shan Chan, the White Tower, Pot on Fane, and the sets that look really, really epic. Let me go ahead and play that clip, but as I said, I'll be breaking it down in another video, but let's watch it. So I cannot wait to get in and break that down frame by frame. That's what I'll be doing in another video. So stay tuned for that. The last major thing that was announced at the Comic-Con panel was a pretty big deal. It was announced that Wheel of Time had been picked up for season three well early of the season two release. Now, this isn't something that normally happens with shows, but having this announced certainly puts to bed some of my fears that the reception to the end of season one had put the dampers on Amazon's excitement for Wheel of Time. I certainly sit in the camp that had wished some things had been done differently at the end of season one, and I don't think that the season as a whole worked or hit what they were after, despite there being some good episodes. But my biggest fear is that the show would be canceled early if it didn't get fans excited, and the team behind the show would never really get their legs under them for making a project of this size and scale. Now, the size and scale of the world and the number of characters are only going to grow going forward, which means that the show is going to continually get more and more expensive the further they go along. That's why I was not sure if Amazon would pull the trigger this early, and they did. Rafe said in regards to the renewal that I, I am so thrilled that we'll be making a third season of The Wheel of Time. The Shadow Rising has always been my favorite book in the series, so being able to bring it to television and introduce new audiences to the stories that made me fall in love with these books in the first place is such an honor. It's something I've been working towards since I first pitched the show years and years ago. Now, the statement strongly implies, along with an answer in the Q&A that we're going to discuss in a minute, that season three will focus on the events of The Shadow Rising, and this season will cover much of books two and three. Now, I do not believe that we're going to finish book three, but more on that in a minute. Rafe also said that he and writer Rami Park would be headed to London to start the season three writer's room very soon. So they're probably not super far along into season three. It probably was just greenlit, and they're going to start writing the episodes now. But it is good to know that that's happening. And depending on when season two comes out, hopefully we don't have too long of a wait. So before we move to the last piece of news here, and arguably the biggest news yet... Let me first thank the video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the number one provider of VPN services in the world. Now, what is a VPN, Nablus? A VPN acts as an intermediary between you and your internet service provider. They create an encrypted browsing experience by routing all traffic through their encrypted sites. It prevents your service provider from tracking your internet movements. It prevents nefarious entities from invading on your privacy. A VPN makes your browsing completely safe and their no logging feature means that none of what you do online can be sold to anybody, none of your data. Additionally, one of the major features of a VPN is the ability to make it appear as though you are from anywhere else in the world. So you can access Netflix in Japan or Europe, even if you live in the US. VPNs are a must have if you use the internet regularly, and normally they are already very cheap. But because you are one of my viewers, you are going to get access to NordVPN for even cheaper. Just click the link in the description of the video to get a massive discount on the already cheap NordVPN service and protect your internet browsing today. It greatly supports the channel and most importantly, it is going to protect you on the internet. So let's get back to the news. All right, so right after the Comic-Con panel ended, Rafe Judkins, the Wheel of Time showrunner, took to Twitter to answer fan questions in the most upfront and non-dodgy way I think we've ever seen Rafe answer questions. 
he answered some major things, and this was certainly the most revealing Q&A that I think we've ever seen from Rafe. So for the sake of keeping this shorter, I have left out some of the joke-oriented questions and focused on the questions that he answered that I thought gave the most important information to the show. These are also in a totally random order, so these are not the way they came in. But we'll kick it off here with Rafe being asked, is the Dark Friend social going to be in the show? And Rafe answered, yep. So right off the bat, this answers a huge question for me. I love the Dark Friend Social. In fact, so much I named my live show after it. That scene from The Great Hunt has such great foreshadowing. It's such a cool thing to see the bad guys behind the scenes. I always thought that was unique. The fact that we're going to see this iconic scene is exciting to me. It also implies a much larger presence for the Forsaken in Season 2, which is also very exciting to me. Next, we have Rafe being asked any hints on Moraine's journey in Season 2. Rafe answers by saying it's much expanded from her book two story, but built out of the core of that and a couple relationships that were not explored in the books. So this only makes sense to me as there is no way they are sidelining the two highest profile actors in the series. Giving Moraine a side quest here could be very interesting depending on how it's executed. Now I'm certainly curious as to which relationships weren't explored in the books, that this could be pertaining to. It's possible that we see Adelius and Vandine involved in the story, but I wonder who else. Rafe was then asked, what is the journey like for Moraine and Lan in season two with their bond still masked? Rafe answered, another big departure point for us from the books was making much more story for Moraine and Lan. We aren't sitting these two amazing actors on the bench for a season, so we take what's in book two for them and we expand it in a huge way. That's all I can say. So this pretty much echoes what I just said. It does seem that they're going to be expanding Adelius and Vandine scenes. But again, what else is going to be going on with that and where could they take that? Next, Rafe was asked, can you tell us how much you will be expanding the Forsaken this season? Rafe answered, it's a big point of difference from the books in season two. We will spend more time with any Forsaken who's in the show, more how the later books treat the Forsaken than necessarily books two or three did. So I love this response in theory. One of the things that I've wanted is expanded roles for the Forsaken and more depth in their characters. When Rafe says treating them more like the later books, it really means that we're going to get more POVs from them and understand their motivation and plans better. I really hope the Forsaken nail their parts. I'm excited for some compelling villains in the show. I don't want them to make just quick cameos. I want them to be a big part of the show. Next, Rafe was asked, favorite season two two two-person scene with only the character names and no more. And Rafe answered, Egwene Renna. So this is confirmation that Egwene will be taken as a Damani in the show. Renna is the Suldam that held Egwene's leash in the books. The horror of slavery and what's done to Egwene could be pretty tough to watch, depending on how they depict this. But I'm hoping they don't hold back too much, as these early things that happen to Egwene make her the badass that she becomes later, and I think it's part of the setup of her character. Next, Rafe is asked, since most main characters are split up geographically at the beginning of The Great Hunt, will the next seasons keep them on parallel timelines for a convergence at Falm? In which case, Portal Stones left a time gap of four months for Rand's group, easier to do on page or on film. Rafe answered by saying, time gaps are very difficult moving to the medium of television with the stories intercutting, but we try to do as much as we can to avoid one-hour cross-continent dragon flights. So a huge bit of shade from Rafe thrown at Game of Thrones here about the hour-long dragon flights. Thought that was funny. But this was a well-crafted question, and I'm glad Rafe chose to answer it. And while he really didn't answer the question, this is going to be something that is difficult to pull off for them. I actually think that making sure it all feels natural that they converge at the same place could be pretty difficult. I'm interested to see how that's going to play out, especially knowing where everybody starts. Next, Rafe was asked, Hopper? And he answered, thank you. Why is no one ever giving Hopper the respect he deserves? Official announcement, Hopper is in season two. Now, first off, Rafe, I don't know who doesn't give Hopper respect, but that being said, I am very excited to see that we will be exploring more of the Wolf Dream and more of Perrin's storyline. Next, Rafe was asked, favorite type of gin? And can you also drop a hint about something you're looking forward to us seeing in season two? And Rafe answered, your pick makes me excited about where Leandrin's character goes in season two. We are so lucky to have the amazing Kate Fleetwood in the show, and you will love, hate, and love to hate her. Then he answered the gin question with Lily. 
I'm not much of a gin drinker here, so I'll have to take your word for it, Rafe. But in terms of his answer, I am also very excited for Kate Fleetwood. She was excellent in season one, and I'm incredibly excited to see more of her in season two. Now, if they take her direction in the same way as the books, and it does appear that they are in at least one sense, it will be exciting to see her be straight up evil. Next, Rafe was asked, are you sticking with the fun cold opens? Rafe answered, yep, it's our ode to the out of POV characters in the books, and we will always have them. So I like this answer. The cold opens were hit and miss in season one, with some of them absolutely nailing it and being some of the best scenes in the entire season, and some of them feeling really out of place and weak. If we get more of the dragon mount scenes, like that type with Shail or the Loghain scenes, I'm going to be very, very happy. Rafe was then asked, did everything happen as planned this season, or did you guys have to change anything, as in the last two episodes of season one? Rafe answered, there were unforeseen changes as we shot season two immediately after the wrap, episodes seven and eight of season one. But that's making television. Anybody who tells you that there weren't unforeseen changes on their show is lying. So what I like about this answer is that we don't hear Rafe making excuses for season one. It would be easy to say it didn't turn out the way we wanted because of X in response to the backlash. He didn't do that, which I appreciate, because regardless of what happens, fans care that the show is good. I don't need to hear the reasons why you couldn't deliver me a good show. I just want to see a high quality show as a fan. So... I'm glad he's not making excuses. I do want them to be better. Um, and again, part of the reason they hire these people is to get around that and make it good. And that's sort of what Rafe is pointing out. Rafe was then asked, what is the biggest change in episode eight that was brought by COVID restrictions compared to what you had originally planned? He answered by saying, the thing I like least was that we originally had Egwene using wisdom skills she'd learned in the pilot from Nynaeve to help her after the channeling in Faldara. But last minute COVID changes on the day didn't allow for the same amount of touching, so it got switched and I face melt emoji. I think I will always struggle with this answer from him. I've heard this before, not because I doubt him, but I mean, I guess I kind of do actually. I'm just not sure how this could have been, like how this was, what their solution was or what the specific COVID restriction was that allowed a little touching, but not a lot to do that scene. I just don't get it. But I 100% agree with Rafe that seeing Egwene use healing herbs and whatnot would have been far superior to the one power healing scene that we got. I just think it would have been better. Rafe was then asked by John from What Up, I have to ask, Gawain and I guess the lesser brother Galad actually beat Matt in the Warder training yard in the show, right? There's no way they lose on screen, is there? And Rafe answered, this is an iconic scene from the book and we are building to a believable version of it in the show, hopefully. Ha. Huh. So despite John being a Gawain lover, which we all know we really want to see Matt kick their ass, I will take this as confirmation from Rafe that Matt will kick their ass in the show. It could be pretty cool. I've always enjoyed that scene in The Dragon Reborn, so I'm hoping we get to see Dunn very well in the show, so we'll see. Rafe was then asked, will we see more than one of these cities in Season 2? Kyrian, Tyr, and Falm. And Rafe answered, yes. So this is huge news and comes as a surprise to a number of people, myself included. It looked like they were only going to be doing Falm from all the sets we've seen, but it appears that we're going to either get Tyr or Kyrian as well. Now, my bets would be on Kyrian and not Tyr, but there is a shot in the behind the scenes clip that could lead you to believe that it would be Tyr. So we'll have to see. Rafe was then asked which books make it into season two. And Rafe answered pieces of one, two, and three. So this doesn't come as much of a surprise as we sort of already knew this. I think we'll get most of books two and three, but not the ending of book three. Rafe was then asked, will weaves appear the same in the coming seasons? Congrats on season three, by the way. Rafe answered, they're getting a bit of a revamp for season two. Threads and colors and bears, oh my, but no bears. So this is amazing, awesome, super good news in my opinion. I really miss the distinction of the weaves in season one, the different threads, giving the magic system depth. I think giving color to the weaves will help separate it, explain it to the audience, and drive a ton of depth in season two and beyond. I'm a huge fan of this move, and going back to their original concept for weaves is awesome. Rafe was then asked, how many episodes will season two be? And if only eight again, will they be longer? He answered, they are longer than the first season, but yes, still only eight. I know many of us want more episodes. I, I certainly do. I think it would solve a lot of problems for them. But I'm happy that they are longer than the first season. Just adding five minutes, like was done in our five minutes in heaven panels at WatCon, 
where people just added five minutes to the show and decided what they would do dramatically changes the results of those episodes. I think that was a fun panel and the concept of it is exactly this. If the episodes are longer, I think we're going to get better, more cohesive stories. So I'm glad about this change. Next, Rafe was asked, are the Wheel of Time origins canon to the TV show or just a pretty amazing side piece? where the stories of the origins aren't the mythology used in the show. And Rafe answered, canon. So I'm glad that these are canon, and I would think it would be confusing for readers and non-readers if they weren't. By being canon, they just expand the Watcher's knowledge of the world of the Wheel of Time. Rafe was then asked which character had his plot changed the most compared to the books. And he answered, Matt, but we are trying to bring the characters back to where they should be at the end of season two. So this is a remarkably straightforward answer from Rafe. He is acknowledging how far off from the books Matt's current er character arc is, but it seems as though they have a plan to get them all back together at the end of season two. Next, Rafe is asked, how far into the books will this season take us? I know the Emmons Field 5 are much more split up than I of the world. Rafe answered, we are trying to get a fair amount of what's done in books one through three, with large parts still being held for later, by the end of season two, so that season three can be a much closer adaptation of The Shadow Rising. So this is the type of communication I wish we got more of, at least from my point of view. Having a rough idea of how they are trying to approach the adaptation is helpful in understanding the choices they make. That's the lens that I watch the show through, to a degree at least. I also love hearing that they want to do a close adaptation of The Shadow Rising. That's my favorite book by far. It sounds to me like they are not going to do Kalendor this season, but save that for season Season three. My guess is that we will end season two still at fall. So that's it for the questions I'm going to cover in this video. You can find a couple of recaps of those questions on Twitter or a great resource if you want to hear more about this is head to www.watseries.com for a full list of the questions and other coverage of Comic-Con panels and news about the wheel. So what was the biggest piece of news in your eyes? What got you the most excited? What has you the most fearful? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure to look for my breakdown of the season two behind the scenes clip coming that revealed a lot from season two of the show. Also, I have a live show here on YouTube called The Dark Friend Social that airs every single Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. This week, I'll have the Talk Around Riyadh podcast on with me and we will be further talking about all of this news. Make sure to stay on the lookout for that. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. I could not do this without you. If you enjoy the content and want to show your appreciation and support for the content that I make, please consider checking out the Patreon. Your support is more than appreciated. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, check out the story of Malkir to get you ready for the Watt Origins video in August. Thank you all for watching and until next time, peace out.